Hey guys, so today we're going to learn how to make a template for a baseball, a softball, whatever you really need to make a template for. I mean, this even works like if you had a specific shape you wanted to make. If you did these steps and put this into your software, you would have an exact template so that you knew exactly where to put everything and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so we're doing baseballs. So let's talk a few minutes about baseballs. So there's different kinds of baseballs. So this is the one I did for the new UIC in our area. And he's a great kid and he's taking my husband's job, which is why I have so many baseballs sitting around. Um, but what we did was on his, I left the wording. So all the markings on the baseballs are actually still there on his because it means something. He is in that world, that's what he wants. But if you're doing it for like a baby shower or something, the baby doesn't want a diamond baseball or Rawlings or Wilson, I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this baseball um, is a premium leather baseball. So higher quality, like this one. I don't know if you can see the green smudges that are on it. <laughs> this was a mess up. Um, there are different types of baseball. One of them says a leather cover. Those are the ones that you can easily use the 100% acetone fingernail polish remover to take those wor that wording off. If your baseball says premium leather or full grain leather, the wording will not come off no matter how much acetone you use. So keep that in mind. Um, when doing this, um, this was a mess up. I did not pay attention <laughs> and grabbed one of my husband's expensive balls. Oops, <laughs> my bad. Anyway, so to make the template, you're going to grab yourself a baseball, a cheap one preferably, and you're going to take a razor blade or a seam ripper, and you're going to remove the stitching. So you kind of like put it in there, push down, and start cutting. Make sure try not to cut the leather. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to cut this one away because there's other steps you have to do. So first step, grab your baseball, your razor blade and your seam ripper and start removing the laces. All of that. Okay. So I've got most of mine done. I'm going to grab a Sharpie marker. And you want the Sharpie marker to match the color of lacing. So you can purchase different colors of lacing. There's purple, there's blue, there's green, there's all kinds of colors. I'm going to do red. Um, red is standard baseball color. So <laughs> that's what I use. So what you want to do before you complete the remix, as you're taking the, the, the stitching off, the lacing off, you notice that it's easier to kind of pull as you go. Um, but before you pull too far, um, where it's still fairly lined up and stuck together. If you can see this, I hope you can see this. There's an area where the V's kind of go. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna mark those two V's. Can you see that? I hope so. It's right there. Right there. Okay, so mark that. All right, so then once you have that marked, you're going to look at your baseball and technically this is upside down, but we don't care because we're just going to make sure that the top is marked over here as well. So this is going to be the top, but this is going to be the top so that when you put it on here, this is very important because if you notice mine, Cade 2022 is correct. UIC is not correct. <laughs> it makes Kate upside down, or if Kate's right, UIC sound. So it's very important <laughs> to mark which one's top so you can flip it. Um, anyway, so you're going to take a Sharpie marker. You're going to kind of lift this up and underneath there, and you can see that this is nice leather. It's really crinkling. It's good leather. So up here, and we're just going to put a T on the inside. Okay. Once you have those two marks done on this one piece, just this piece, you can go ahead and fully remove the rest of just this piece. Leave the other piece 
stuck to the baseball. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, guys, once you have all the lacing off your baseball, and this one's still stuck, and I have not peeled this one off at all, it's still stuck. You'll notice on some baseballs, all this stitching here, that's okay. It, it's They take it underneath the ball itself to really anchor it, so that's normal. So I hope you remember which way was top. <laughs> I remember mine was upside down, so I know that this is top. So I'm going to just put a little T up here on my ball. And you might wanna do that before you got started, um, but I just stuck a little T there for just right now. But what we want to do is we want to take the Sharpie and we want to draw all around the outside of the baseball. All along that section. Okay? Because this is important so that you get it back where it goes. Because if you don't make these marks, trust me, I did it. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to get mine done just because I think, thank goodness, it was this kind of leather. So it kind of adjusted itself. Um, but it wasn't easy. Um, this makes it so much easier. All right. So once you have your lines all the way across, you're going to do two things. First thing you're going to do is you're going to peel this up a little and you're going to mark top. That way you know what the top is when you put it in your hoop. That's all that means is this is the direction it needs to go when it's in your hoop. Okay. Second thing is you're going to put one, a number one and a number one inside that. So a one inside of this and a one out here. That means that you're going to match this piece with this section. Because once I take this away, this section looks the same. Now, I don't know if it matters. It might not. Maybe that's how I luckily got mine <laughs> stitched back together correctly. Um, but just in case, it doesn't hurt. A little one in a one and just to make sure. All right, then we're just gonna remove this off. Now my ball, naked. I have a naked little baseball. And I have two pieces of baseball. Now, like I said, remember, see this? This is this is the premium balls and premium leather. <laughs> but this leather is extremely bowed. Um, you're not gonna have this real problem with a cheaper baseball. Um, the more expensive the leather is, the more it actually shapes um, and holds that shape. So, um, yours ball probably won't be as curvy as mine. Okay, so we're gonna set all this stuff aside and we're gonna grab one piece of our leather. So, um, when I did this originally, I took it to my iron and set it on cotton and put a silicone ironing sheet on it. I think that's silicone, the smooth ones, the applique ironing sheet. <laughs> anyway, put something over it and then just take your iron and kind of make sure you iron it flat. Okay, once you have that done, that it's iron flat, I'm gonna grab a ruler. Now I have um, a metric ruler because of course the software uses millimeters and I highly recommend you keep that use, okay? So then what I did was I just put it on there where the millimeter sign is and then I just smoothed it out and I measured it. And this measures at about 185 millimeters, which is 18.5. Uh, you don't wanna stretch it too much but you want to do it at the biggest point or the longest point. Okay. And that's about 18.5 centimeters or 185 millimeters. Okay. So write that measurement down. It's very important. Okay. All right. Once you have that measurement done and your piece, you're going to smack this down into your um, scanner and you're going to scan it in. And once it's scanned in, 
that's when the software fun starts. So next screen will be at our computer. Okay guys, so you should have your baseball um, scanned in and we should be ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and open up our MySonet software and we're gonna click, double click on tools. And we're gonna go directly to our digitizing um, module. Okay, so we're on our digitizing module and we are now going to do um, load or create a background picture and hit next. We're gonna click load picture and we're gonna go grab our baseball scan. Oh, and make sure that your scan was a PNG or JPEG, not a PDF. All right, we're gonna say okay. And there's my scan. Notice it's not the one that I had. I actually used a different baseball, but same concept. All right, we're gonna go ahead and say next. We are gonna crop this down very close to the edges without cutting any edge off, okay? The reason we do this is because we want to use this to scale. And because we're only addressing certain, we have to get it as close as we can so that the scale remains. Okay, that looks pretty good. We're gonna say next. We're gonna change our hoop and we're gonna do enter hoop size. And our height is gonna be 185. And we don't care what our width is. And we're gonna say, okay. And we're gonna say finish. Okay, let me go change my background color real quick. I did this for another video so that they could see the white and I just didn't change it back. Give me one second. Okay, that's better. I don't like that look. Okay, so here is our baseball piece that we need, and we are going to choose Point Create, and we're going to click on the bottom portion of Pattern Fill and say No Fill. You can also technically click on the top, but whatever. <laughs> we're gonna do, we're gonna click on the bottom portion of Satin Line Truly, and we're going to choose Running Stitch. The reason I have you guys click on the bottom and do the no fill or whatever is because then you get in the habit of clicking on the bottom and not the top. So when you it switches them, we don't want that. All right, we're gonna click on Create Area or Line, and this is super easy, guys. You're basically gonna place dots all around this outside edge. So just get to plotting. Um, don't forget at the end, you can always adjust those points, which we will um, just kind of put them on there. You don't have to have the points super close to get that shape. You just want to make sure that they retain that shape. And I'm going to have you stop a little ways from the last one and right click to set your points. So if you're not done yet, go ahead and pause the video and finish plotting your points. Otherwise, right click, that's gonna set your points. Then we're gonna come over here to step two on our film strip. We're gonna right click and go to properties and we're gonna choose closed border line and say, okay, that's gonna close that border up on top. Okay, so mine looks pretty good, but we wanna make sure that it is exact. This is an instance where it being precise is needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and edit points because obviously we can see that that is definitely not correct. And I'm just gonna come in here and I'm going to make sure that this is all around that outside edge as close to being precise as possible. Okay, just keep going through and make those dots is move them until it's as perfect as you can get it or as close to perfect. Nothing's ever perfect, guys. So don't think that, you know, oh my gosh, it's got to be perfect just really close to perfect in this instance, okay? I normally never tell you to make anything perfect because perfection is not possible, but on this one, we want it as close 
to perfect as possible. All right, yeah, that's way off. So we're gonna come in here and fix that, maybe. Mm -hmm. And just keep fixing them up as best as you can. If you meet, need to add a point because, oops, you didn't put too many, you can click on insert point and put a point in there. Or if you put too many and you need to get rid of one, you can delete a point. And then make sure to go back to edit points before you do anything else and fix that up. Okay, I'm going to call mine good. If you're not good, go ahead and pause the video and you can come back to it when you're ready. Okay. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we are going to right click on running stitch and we're going to do insert color change. And we are going to grab a color that's different from our current color and add it in there. We're going to go back to point create. We're going to leave running stitch where it is and we're going to do create area or line. Okay. So you might be wondering what this is for. Well, this is where to place your baseball. So our first stitch is baseball piece placement stitch. The second stitch is going to be used for software only. And this stitch is going to tell you where the holes are because you do not want thread in those holes. Trust me, I did a ball for this class sample and it had, I got too close and there were stitching in those holes. I broke three needles trying to get um, that through the thread. And it wasn't the point that was breaking. It was the actual part where the thread was in. It was just too wide and it would not come through. It was a nightmare. I finally got it in there, but oh my gosh, it was forever. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are now going to come in here and tell so that we know where those holes are. And one of the nice things is, is you can definitely see those holes, which makes this next part really easy. Oops, we're not gonna go that close. So we're gonna just go start in there, putting these points directly on these dots or stitch holes. And we're just gonna keep doing it all the way down the baseball and back up the other side. Oops, back up the other side once we get there. And I kind of want to do it towards the end of the hole, not like the center of the hole or anything, because that gives you a false sense of security. Um, I will tell you that I still stay away from it, even though this line exists. I do not go right up to this line. I just don't. It, I, I learned my lesson the hard way. It was terrible. Um, so hopefully I didn't mess up on anybody's balls. I'm teaching this class um, on Saturday and I did custom designs for everybody. So hopefully these turn out good and um, they're not close. Okay, we're going to right click to set our points. If you're not done, go ahead and pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to right click on running stitch. We're going to choose properties and we're going to do that closed borderline and say, okay. All right. We're going to make sure that looks good. We're going to go home tab, edit points. All right. We're going to make sure that this looks good. Again, doesn't have to be perfect, just as close as possible. Not why I added that extra weird point, but whatever. This one down a little bit. Okay, and you're happy with it? Okay, so when you're happy with it, you are going to test this design. It is imperative that you test it before you do it. Oh wait, we're not done. <laughs> My bad. We got one more thing to do. Okay. Um, before we test our design, we need to do select all visible. That's going to select the whole thing. Then we're going to choose modify block. 
change design size. And I want to show you why. Over here on the right, if you notice, this is not 185 millimeters. It's 182.1. So we want to come in here and we want to choose height. And we want to take this number to 185 and say OK. Um, I'll be real honest with you. It doesn't change it. It didn't change it to that on mine. Uh, mine actually ended up being 184.8. Um, it, it still worked. It was okay. Um, it, it still seemed to be correct in size. So those 0.3 millimeters aren't going to kill you. Okay, or ruin your design. All right, so we're going to go to view, and we're going to do edit background. Oops, that's not what we're doing. Sorry, guys. <laughs> My bad. Oh, no. Seriously? Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay, hold on, guys, because that was a total utter fail. Hold on. Okay, guys, so I totally messed up and deleted mine. So I came back in here and did it really quick. So we were talking, so back to what we were talking about was modified block that the, the, the 185 being 184.7 or 184.8 is perfectly fine. It didn't seem to matter when I stitched it out. Okay, so at this point, you would have had all your points all fixed up, made it look pretty, have the correct size or as close to the correct size as you think you can have it. And now we want to test it. We want to make sure that it is actually the size it's supposed to be. So you're going to simply either export this or simply send it to your machine um, using the Wi-Fi if you have that capability and stitch it out. Um, I just loaded, oh, you, uh, yeah, it does fit in its hoop, but um, obviously the hoop won't be that size. It uses a 240 by one, um, 240 by 150 hoop. I used a metal hoop. I threw in a piece of tearaway and stitched it out. So um, go stitch it out, make sure it's correct, and okay guys. So I stitched mine out. There it is. And you are going to fit your piece of baseball to it. And mine's kind of sticky, so it helps. So you just kind of set it down there and line it up. Now, when you actually stitch out the baseball, you are using sticky uh, stabilizer. So either sticky wash away or sticky tear away. I preferred the um, sticky wash away. Sticky tear away, I don't know. It like, I had like used like six needles on one very simple baseball. Whereas when I used the aqua magic or the sticky wash away, I used two needles on a very difficult one where it was just loaded with words. So very, um, my opinion was Aquamagic. Okay. And my poor ball is not very sticky and it's not sticking, but it fits. Yay. So, and then what I did was, was I took a pen, like a, uh, like a stick pen, like a sewing pen. And I stuck holes in the holes to make sure that that one lined up as well. And once that's working, we can do the next step. So as long as yours is working and you don't need to make any changes, go back to your computer. Okay, welcome back. So we are now ready to do the next step. So there are two sides to your baseball or two pieces to your baseball, not one. You may only want to stitch one side. That's totally up to you, but we're going to set it up for two sides. So we're going to go ahead and change our hoop to the hoop that we are going to be needing. So we're going to uncheck enter hoop size and we're going to choose a 240 by 150 hoop and say OK. All right, let's get rid of that background. So I'm going to go to view and I'm just going to hide my background. Yay! All right, so here we are. So and yes, mine looks really terrible because like I said, I had to read too much. <laughs> Good thing I saved the original. OK, so I am going to center this one. Um, on that uh, horizontal line. And then I am going to go to my home tab and I'm going to choose copy and I'm going to choose paste. 
I'm then going to move it over and keeping it centered. All right, this is going to give me two of my baseball pieces. And you don't have to mirror it or flip it or anything because it should be pretty spot on no matter which piece you put in. Um, so it should be good. Um, I am going to go ahead and ungroup. And then this um, soldier blue one, I'm going to move up to the sol to its matching one. And this one, I'm going to move up to its matching one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and delete these colors. You could technically do this in a uh, color sort or when you uh, export it, it would, you know, you can use color sort and it would do it. But just to show you a little bit how you can move them around to do that, I, it's what that was for. All right, okay, once you have your um, design done, we're gonna go to file and we're gonna export it and you're gonna save it wherever you need it to be. Um, so name it. I named mine soft stitching with Stephanie baseball template. Um, I am not saving this one, <laughs> obviously, because it's a mess. Okay, so we're going to go ahead. Oops, not paying attention. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I am going to close this now. Voila, and this is the terrible one. So I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to open. And I'm going to grab that template that I created earlier. And I'm going to say, no, I definitely don't want to change that. Oh, look, much better. And um, then I'm going to grab a different hoop because this is way too small. And I say, OK. All right, there it is. And I'm going to add my grid back. There we go. All right, so here's my template. So next step is to add wording, decorations, whatever you want to do. Now, I find that doing it in a horizontal position versus vertical position, way easier. So I'm going to change my hoop to rotated, and then I'm going to go home and I'm going to rotate those 45. And if you look at your hoop, so here's the bottom of the hoop. This is the top of my hoop. Remember I, how I kept saying that the top is really important? This again, this is the top of your hoop. Your left side is the top of your hoop. Okay, so I'm going to go in, do letters, um, mystery quest, interesting. We'll go ahead and we're going to do this love nest just because I love this font. All right. And we're going to do those that actually, yeah, we're going to do that. And I'm going to say apply. Okay. So there's my name. Not a lot of hearts in my name. I wonder if I should do capital. Let's do all capital. Let's right click. When you want to make changes, it's really easy to just right click and say edit lettering. And then you can come in here and you can make changes. And there it is. My S is like really small. Doesn't matter. Okay. I'm not loving that font. Okay. I really got to stop focusing on that. Okay. Anyway, so we are going to use my favorite thing ever invented in this software, and that is to be able to shape our lettering. I love it. It's so much fun. So I'm going to choose curve because we've got curves. And then I'm also going to choose constraint free. That means I can move it as I choose. And I'm going to uncheck force distribution because I don't want it to do that. Okay. So then I'm going to kind of make my name fit to my baseball using these little handles. And what is that? This one. Now, remember how I said you definitely don't want it anywhere near that stitching? Not kidding. Make sure that even on here that it is not even close to looking like it's going to hit those, that stitching. Okay. So I kind of, depending on the font that you use, you can kind of put the box on the line and that kind of helps. And then, well, wow, that's pretty good. Let's kind of get it just a little bit more shape. Hmm. Okay. So I think I'm going to need some more dots. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add, I'm going to add three more points to my curve. I'm going to drag these little suckers over here. Okay. 
Okay. There we go. And same thing here. Okay, so we can kind of put the little boxes just touching the line. And you guys can get closer than that. Like I said, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> it failed. It really failed. Trust me, it failed. It looked cute though. It really did look cute. I, it's like my one of my favorite projects I've ever done. Okay, so there's my name. So then we could do go to super design and we could add, hopefully you don't hear my dog barking. Let's add a little heart. Now I want this heart to be the correct way. So the correct way on the top is with the bottom of the design towards the top. So I'm going to go to home and I'm going to rotate my design so that the bottom of the heart is facing the top. So remember, this is the top and I want the bottom of my heart facing the top. It's a little big. Let's shrink my little heart down a little bit. Okay. Okay. I like that. All right. So I want another one of those hearts. So I'm going to copy and paste and I'm going to drag it this way. And for the bottom, the bottom, you want the top of what you want to say. Let's use a word. I think it'll make more sense. Uh, let's get a different font. Where's that one font? Hold on. This one. Okay. okay, so in order for this to make sense, you have to look at your ball and realize that it's round and when it comes up and over, it's going to be a different direction. So your wording for your bottom part, you want the top of the lettering to be at the top. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we'll rotate it so you look at it. Okay, so we're going to go to the home tab and we're going to rotate 45. Rotate 45. Okay. So then let's get a curve. Let's get constraint free and no force distribution. All right, so now we're going to <gasps> not that one. Okay, so does that make more sense? So when it folds over, so this is going to be here. So that needs to be this way. This is going to be here. So it needs to have that point there. Does that make sense? So this is panel one. So this is that first panel that's going on, the one that I had you mark top and one, that's this one. This one, is going, this is the top, so it's going here. So the heart, when you see it, is going to have a point here. And then this is gonna have love the correct way, okay? Trust me, I've screwed this up enough that I have literally like looked at this a thousand times, okay? So 
that is how you do it. And you can just add words, shape them, do whatever you want, add little things. Um, I think it's cute when they're filled. The one I did for the gallery is all filled up and I love it. I, I, I cannot wait to bring it home. It's like my favorite, favorite, favorite one that I've done for a gallery store. Love it. Okay guys, so that's it. It teaches you how to make your template, add the things to it. Oh wait, we have one more thing to do. Okay, so remember how I said when we designed this that this was the placement stitch and this was where we knew to to do the words or the items that we put in there. We wanna take this out. You don't technically have to, you can just not stitch it, but I think it's just as easy to just get rid of it. So I'm gonna choose that design. So on the film strip, I'm gonna choose the number one and I am going to go to modify. I'm going to uncheck color one, which is that soldier blue. I'm gonna leave two. I'm gonna select all visible and I'm gonna delete. And then I'm going to go. Okay, so that's gone. So now all it's going to do is it's going to stitch out my placement stitches. I'm going to use sticky stabilizer. I'm going to stick my baseball pieces there. And then it's going to stitch those in the, what order. And make sure that you do not use the same colors. Um, Words can be the same couple colors, that's not a problem, but you don't want anything the same color as this outside line. Okay guys, that's it. It is so easy and so fun. Once it's stitched out, you're gonna line everything back up. Your baseball will still be kind of sticky, so that'll help. If it's not, you use push pins to shove everything into that little sucker to hold it in place. You grab your um, waxed thread, and um or lacing and let me tell you i used the hemp thread because i love the look so the book ball i showed you at the beginning the one that said kate that is um hemp thread love the look hate the way it goes in it's so hard the whack that thing took me days to do because it was just so difficult threading that thing because it was so thick the wax thread goes in so smooth, so nice. It's amazing. So I highly recommend that. Um, you can order it on Amazon. Okay, guys. Um, that's it. Um, questions or anything, hit me up. Hope you enjoyed. And if you want the design without the digitizing, go to my Facebook page, Stitching with Stephanie, and the design will be up and you can comment and I will email it to you. Um, just make sure that you PM me your email address if I don't haven't sent you anything before. All right, guys, that's it. Have a wonderful day. I hope you make lots of baseballs. If you do, um, tag Stitching with Stephanie um, either on Instagram or Facebook um, so that I can see what you've done. All right, guys, have a great day. Bye.